Hi, this is Bill Abbott. I'm the cartoonist for Spectacles and for the Percenters. And this morning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how I create a Percenters cartoon. Uh, my Spectacles cartoons are syndicated through creators for newspapers in the U.S. Um, and North America. And my Percenters cartoons originally started out uh, as magazines, magazine cartoons. I'm a huge, huge fan of the New Yorker cartoonists, especially the classic era. Um, Misha Richter, Mort Gerberg, uh, Lee Lorenz, Charles Saxon, these just brilliant, brilliant cartoonists. And I have such great admiration for their work. And, uh, so the Percenters was inspired by that. And, um, uh, so I'll create one now. Um, First thing, as always, I go to File, New, and the sizes, the dimensions are, are the same for both the percenters and the spec, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the spectacles cartoon, 7 inches by 7 inches by 400. That gives plenty of uh, detail, plenty of DPI if the image needs to be expanded. So we'll just hit, and that's in RGB. All my work is in RGB initially. Uh, for print work, it gets converted to CMYK. Okay, so 7x7, seven 400 seven, DPI, click OK, and the first layer, as always, will be my pencil layer, so I'll double-click that and rename that pencil, and I'll have an ink layer. Let's get all the layers set up now, and then lastly, I'll have a wash layer, an ink wash. Uh, typically, or the way it used to be, when uh, all the artwork was created analog, you would just take your India ink and dip your brush in water to, just to give it a, a slight tone difference. Uh, it's really cool in Clip Studio. You can now do that. There's a, a brush tool where it emulates that really, really well. And I'll, I'll show you as we get into that part of the, uh, the video. Uh, the difference between the other... Um, layers and the wash layer is the wash layer is a multiply layer all the others are uh, normal layers so I'll make that multiply okay and then we'll go to the pencil tool the pencil tool I usually keep it at about uh, 17 dpi wide or is that dpi I'm sorry not dpi 17 pixels wide so then I have kind of an idea uh, it kind of came up this morning that uh, I had insufficient coffee to operate uh, out of zombie mode. So, I don't know, this idea kind of came out of that. So, all right, the first thing that I do is I begin sketching the heads. Uh, I just, I want to position all of the different props in order to make the image work. As I would mentioned in one of my Spectacles cartoons, um, I had read early on, uh, that you have about four seconds your average viewer cartoon viewer will invest about four seconds in a cartoon that means that they're going to start reading it usually from left to right but then that just not in terms of the words but in terms of the visuals they have to take in all the information including the gag line in about four seconds if it doesn't work in that time that's that's it it's over um, hopefully you get more than that um, so you got four seconds, so you, you really, it's incumbent on cartoonists to try to set the cartoon up as sensibly and economically as you can with, with that in mind. So, the, uh, the Percenters has a, has a much different look than Spectacles. They're uh, much more of a, a generic, I'd, I'd like to think, a New Yorker type character. Although that's still aspirational. Okay, we have two guys. And they're talking to each other. And then they're going to be in an office setting. So I'm just trying to figure out the individual components. So that, again, those key components are visible. They make sense. And uh, my four seconds pays off. So... Let's have a little shape over here, which will hopefully become something afterwards, or it'll make sense afterwards. And sometimes you need to put a little sign explaining something that would otherwise be really difficult to, to draw out and make very plain. 
Um, so the use of signage can be important. And I will make that kind of big. We'll see how the sizing is on that. See if we have to change that. Let's call this. Coffee uh, area. Yeah, we'll call it coffee area. Not all offices have a room dedicated to that particular beverage, shamefully. Okay, so let's start dividing the shape up into lesser components, and then we'll describe what those components are going to be. Okay, these components are actually going to be people. And make some female office members, male office members. And then we'll put some inside of this shape. We got quite a group going here. Looks like a big giant group hug, hopefully. It's kind of the look I'm going for. Kind of a big mess of a group, but that's okay. We just got to capture the essence of the idea. Does that look okay? We should put in like a little counter space. If it's a coffee area, you're gonna need a counter. You probably need more than one coffee machine. Well, any office I would work in would need more than one coffee machine. That's for sure. Okay, so we'll make our little coffee pots. We'll make this a twofer. Double coffee pot. Okay, there's that. Maybe a little portable fridge. Got to have your foo foo creamer. Be uncivilized if you didn't. There's a little foo foo creamer fridge. Some more counter space. And then maybe we'll end the counter there, and then have a another dividing wall. Maybe that wall come out at an angle. Okay, so. Let's go into a little more detail with our characters. Some eyebrows. That line. I used to never draw that. This is kind of a silly thing, but I used to never draw that line until I started to really study uh, Misha Richter's work. And he drew that line. I just thought that that looked really, it added something. I, I, not really sure, but it, I just thought that was kind of neat, so then I started adding it. Okay, give the guy some hair. Gotta have some hair. Well, no, no, I guess you don't. But this guy will. Okay, we'll give him a business shirt. How does that look? Go zoom out. What we got here? Yep, okay, that makes sense. Visually, hopefully. We got this guy. Same thing, kind of move the eye closer to the nose, make it look like he's looking at his buddy. But we'll uh, we'll try to rectify some of that in the uh, the inking layer. And this guy give him more of a I don't know why, but that uh, pointed area of the hair in the forehead makes everybody look like Dracula. Don't know why I do that, but uh, just think that looks kind of cool. Same thing, give him his little neck there, collar, his tie. Let's see, we'll zoom back out. All right, let's add an element that can help direct our attention to the action. Let's have this guy, he's kind of 
pointing to what's happening in the background just to explain it a little better visually. So uh, the more information people get, even before they read the punchline, the better, in my in my opinion. The more clear it becomes. Okay, let's give this guy up. He's holding his mug of coffee. Cup of Joe. Come down on his arm there. And he's sitting in his chair. Hopefully it's apparent. I can't go too low because on these, my gag line will be right down along this line here if you can see the cursor. So I have to leave enough space that it doesn't crowd that. Okay, so, and then we'll also give this guy, see what size, okay, the mug. And again, we want the mugs to be somewhat prominent, somewhat uh, center in the image. So it, it creates uh, a sense of what's going on and the, the purpose really of the, the cartoon and the gag. So let's get his arm done, finish his tie off. He'll be kind of a high pants kind of guy. Okay, and again, we'll cut it off right about there. You know, maybe we'll we'll have to do away with the chair only because we don't have enough room really to make it clear that that's what it is. And I think if they're standing there, that should still be somewhat... I don't think it'll take away from the cartoon. So let's go with that. Okay. So there's our basic... Um, pencil work where we've we've sort of figured out where everything is where the components are and where they need to be so the next thing i'll just add this a little bit maybe a little little line make the architecture a little more clear but not overdone okay so next let's go oh <laughs> this is a uh, an actual pretty common problem for me this is actually this is great that i captured this in the video because i do this all the time i am such a knucklehead when i was setting up my layers I accidentally didn't highlight my pencil layer. So this work that we just did, we created it in the wash layer. That's an easy enough to fix. What I do is I just merge down, down. Okay, so now my wash layer is my ink layer, but I don't want it to be that either. So I'm gonna combine it to the layer below. Okay, so there's my pencil layer. That was a, a great lesson learned. I'm glad you get to see that. Hopefully other cartoonists that watch me being a knucklehead, it'll help you to dodge that bullet. Okay, so the next thing, we need to recreate our ink layer because that's what we're about to do. All right, ink, enter, and then wash. It's always best when you do work twice. Not at all, right? That is incorrect. Okay, wash again, that will be a multiply layer. And here's where we'll be careful. Highlight the ink layer. Okay, here we go. So um, we'll use the ink tool. We'll keep that at about 17 pixels wide. And what I tend to do, sometimes I jump around, but um, I like to get the structures done mostly first because it, it it gives everything um, a place and a relationship to those things so the counter and let's add a couple of doors on there for detail just so it's well, it's a little wonky that's one thing that I, I sometimes have difficulty when I draw digitally is the angle of straight lines. They tend not to be up or down because of the, uh, I'm right-handed, I'm drawing all this right-handed, and it tends to have a, a lean. When Rather than have the line going straight up and down as I want it, because of the position of my hand on the screen, it tends to go from uh, the upper left to the lower right rather than up and down and I just have to be cognizant of that. Get a little hinges there, little details that again it helps to explain. There's the top of that. Okay. 
Let's do the sign. Here's your sign. The edges. And this, hopefully this has a different feel than my Spectacles cartoons. Um, it's really a joy to be able to work on something else, to have a creative break. Even though I love working on Spectacles, it's really helpful to divert my attention to something completely different. And even though, obviously, uh, The Percenters is another cartoon, it's written from a, a different place psychologically. When I do my writing, I'm thinking differently than I do for Spectacles. It's not necessarily driven by characters or specific characters. It's more situational. And it's, its inspiration is different. Um, again, it's, it's from The New Yorker. The, the style of humor tends to be more of a... I guess more of a, a thinking humor. Not to um, say that Spectacles doesn't have that. Um, I just I tend to think that... Uh, the New Yorker is a style. It's a style of thinking and a, and a visual style most often. And um, so it puts me in a different creative mode. And that gives me a break um, from spectacles and sort of recharges those batteries. So it's a, it's a nice thing. Okay, again, I'm nobody's... Uh, I'm not, I was going to say the word letterer, but I know that's the right... Callig calligrapher? No, not calligrapher. Yeah, calligraphy. Calligrapher. I'm not one of those. <laughs> I just did a little uh, mental check to make sure I was drawing in the right um, uh, layer again. That would be embarrassing. Capture that and put that out for all to see. Although I probably would. Okay. Coffee area. Okay. Let's look at that. Let's have that look. Okay. It looks all right. And we'll do this, whatever this wall thinger is. Bring this down. And uh, in cartooning, I sometimes have to catch myself. It's not not it's not intended to be perfect. It's it's not uh, uh, Rembrandt. Um, it's it's intended to convey an idea, and I sometimes get myself caught up in overdoing the artwork, only because that's I enjoy it, and I sometimes allow myself to indulge. But it's not necessary. Uh, you, and you can if you want. There's nothing There's nothing at all wrong with that uh, for a cartoonist. It's, it has to be what you want it to be. And it will find its audience. But it doesn't have to be technically perfect. And if you've seen my artwork, you will keenly understand that. Okay. The double coffee maker. With the little fingers that they have on top there, little heaters. Does anyone think I'm going to get technically accurate? It's going to be my coffee makers. Oh my, yes. A little red light thingies on the front when you fire it up. Okay, we'll come down here. Up to here, in the front of it. Our carafes. Brimming with hot, freshly made brew. Yeah, that's not going to win any art contest, but as I said, representational. Okay, there's the other carafe. The handle. Okay. Let's get our group going here. This guy's arm. You can see a hint on the back of his head, maybe a little bit of hair. This lady's shirt, her dress, this other person over here, I don't know what it is, I always have trouble drawing high heels, <laughs> I guess for a, for those who don't know, I was a career military guy, I guess that's not a, a bad thing to be able to say. Okay. Just kind of leaning in. Hopefully that conveys that. There's our other leg. And, and as I'd mentioned other in uh, the other videos, I'd, I'd done two prior to this. The one thing about um, the Surface Pro 
and Clip Studio. I think it's mostly the Surface Pro, though, the software. Um, the When you're drawing, uh, particularly in Clip Studio, but I, th I think it's the same even when you're using um, Photoshop, it the when you do the lines it tends to be really it gets wobbly and you just have to be aware of that when you draw um sometimes as in here i it's excusable i'm not going to redraw that but just to be you know sort of aware draw some people on the inside of this group A little pigeon toad, a little leg, just a hint of a leg. This guy's reaching over. There's his hand. Again, just sort of representational. You won't be seeing this at the Louvre. Okay. Guess he's going to be a little pigeon toad too. I can relate to that. There's his foot. Some other people that are on the inside of this group. There's somebody with high heels, another office worker. And here, another hint of a skull, a melon. This guy, a little something here. Same over here. Okay, and his pants, some more legs, it's a big old group, everybody's kind of leaning in, oh, we got to draw a little fridge there, okay, so here's our Foo Foo Creamer fridge, and I admit it, I'm a Foo Foo Creamer drinker. Gotta have my uh, hazelnut creamer. It's the law. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so now we'll get down to these guys. Originally, when I had done these uh, percenters cartoons, when I first started them, it was actually just on a piece of copier paper and a Pigma Micron. I think it was an O5. Uh, that's the dimension. I think that maybe a millimeter. That's the what's that is it but it's a a pigma micron archival ink marker uh, they're really great uh, i used them right up until i went completely digital which was relatively recently uh, within the last year year and a half i think uh, but that's how i created all these originally it was just a piece of copier paper and um the pigma micron so total cost was just a few cents per cartoon so those who are interested in getting into cartooning and those cartoons you know they sold to uh the wall street journal to harvard uh, business review you don't really need much to be able to make work that has its place in the cartoon markets the magazine markets it's it's nice to have the these this technology it's it's great it speeds up the process and you kind of you do things a bit differently but it's it's definitely by no means necessary at least i've i found it not to be okay let's get this guy's coffee mug i have to differentiate coffee mug from mug usually i call i call people's faces mugs maybe that guy's mug so i have to differentiate this is a coffee mug A very particular kung fu coffee grip. Gotta have that. Okay, bring this down. A hint of where his pant line would be, belt line. Up to here. Then we'll do his hand. Sort of the curl of the finger. Knuckles. Um, pointing again we want to we want the eye to be drawn to the center of attention which is this this group of people over here so I'll finish this guy up his 
eyebrow going there. A lot of times too, if the if the underlying pencil drawing is too dark, uh, I didn't do it this time, but a lot of the time I will lower the opacity on that layer, which uh, it makes drawing on top of it much more clear. You're less likely to to omit lines that need to be drawn because it looks like they're there from the bottom layer or the the underlying layer, or um, something that you've indicated in your pencil drawing is no longer clear when you're trying to draw it on your ink layer so just uh i, I sometimes do that as if we're going to talk about the process here that's that's sometimes part of it so get the cartilage type stuff going in the ear there is not okay there's his Kung Fu coffee grip. Don't anybody stealing your coffee mug. Not okay. Get his arm. Underlying forearm. With uh, the percenters cartoons, for whatever reason, I tend to draw them a little bit more quickly. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But the, the process tends to take less time than spectacles uh, that's not by design it's just how it is okay see what we got okay all right i think i like that okay so now as i mentioned in another video i often like the knucklehead that i am forget to sign my own work so i have to be really isn't that weird? But uh, I actually have to be pretty cognizant of that, so let's drop that in there. There we go. Okay, so that's the ink layer is done. So what I'll do next is the little eyeball that's over here on the layer section that's next to the pencil layer, I'll turn that off. That makes that invisible. Oh, you know what? Uh, while I'm still on the ink, what is not clear is it doesn't look like this guy's actually talking but he's going to be delivering the gag line so we'll make that a little more evident a little bottom lip okay all right so let's start the wash and this is one of the the real benefits to uh, clip studio paint pro there over here on the right is the tool section they have a uh, brush tool and I use smooth watercolor. If you look up here where it's highlighted in blue, uh, well, at the very top it's watercolor and then the subsections, uh, smooth watercolor. It's really, really great brush. It does a great job. It looks very much like watercolor. Um, anything that doesn't look right in this cartoon when I'm done has nothing to do with the brush. It has to do with me not being as proficient with it yet as I would like to be. But it's a, it's a really great, great brush. Um, so, and that's that's one of the, the features of uh, the New Yorker cartoons that I enjoy so much is they just have this, I guess it gives it a more finished or polished look, which I really enjoy. Okay, just add a little tone to the wall there. And that's, if that's not right, I'll just redo it, which I'll probably end up doing. But again, with uh, the pressure sensitivity, the harder you press, the more pigment you, that you get so and I, I don't want the um, the shading to be overpowering I just I want it to be uh, a very subtle um, I guess a, a means of um, supplementing very subtle means of supplementing the uh, the artwork but I don't want it to be overpowering I don't want the um, those elements to take anything away from what we worked to direct the attention to which is that center group of people and that'll become evident when we do the uh, the gag line so we'll darken that a little bit we'll make that brush smaller and then we we want to do the bolder color and again it'll help to direct the attention over there to the shading which you would have beneath a group like that okay so we want that to be pretty pretty pronounced okay we'll get in a little more 
uh, specific detail over here add a little uh, shadow and again it's, it's more just um, it's it's not neat really when you look at some of the New Yorker cartoons it's almost random in some cases but it's it's so well done so well executed uh, and that's kind of the look that I'm going for here just hints of things a little bit of shadow you would get under the countertop maybe a little near the floor okay same over here a little under the counter and that pretty much takes care of that so now our group here will add some some shade inside here just some random bits to give that uh, dimension And we'll, we'll have uh, various uh, grades of, of uh, light and dark. Because again, that'll really help to give that dimension. Okay, same in here. Kind of over this guy. We'll kind of work from the inside out. Okay, now we'll make our brush a little bit bigger. We'll start adding some definition or color not really color but in terms of uh, gray to the, the the group on the the outer circle okay and again this is all being done with the same brush the watercolor brush it's really really great I got a kind of a funny story um, when I recently switched back to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Photoshop, um, I was so used to the brushes on here, it, it's obviously much easier to navigate something that you use all the time than it is something that you're just getting back into. And the brushes are completely different in Photoshop, and I, was, I wasn't finding... Uh, something similar to this watercolor brush and I really need it for my uh, my percenters cartoons I think it's uh, it adds an awful lot to it so I went online to a uh, there's places that actually sell different different types of brushes there's some you can get for free too and uh, I bought some brushes and the closest I found to this and it's this is the truth is uh, dog drool the name of the brush is dog drool Yep. So I use Dog Drool when I'm in Photoshop to do my percenters cartoons now. So I got that going for me. Give this guy some shadow under the throat there. The eyes here. There we go. Kind of add some, uh, again, some di dimension. Di -di dimension. What was that? Some dimension and some shape and uh, some focus. So we'll make that brush a little bigger. Same over here. Underlying shadow on the forearm. Over here. Same over here. Under the forearm. Around his hand. Shoulders a little bit. There we go. Around here. And then the outside of a coffee mug. A good deal, a little bit here, okay. Under the nose, and again, it's uh, it's not meant to be super specific, um, it's meant to create more of a feel as far as the you know the shading and uh, and adding the tones. Um, just intended to give it a, a, a looser, um, I don't know, more fun, I guess, feel to it. There's his shirt. Give him a darker tie, too. Over here. Over here. Over to here. Underneath, and then the inside. Kind of a little shade there. Okay. All right. I think that's it for the visual. Now, the last thing that we'll add is the punch line. So, to do that, I'll just go over to this letter A, and that's the text tool. I usually make the lettering for my percenters cartoons about uh, 18 pixels. 
it's in Times New Roman and I also use the italic version so I'll click here on the left and here we go oh you know what I need to do it's not black it's a shade of gray so we need to make sure that the lettering is black okay I've done that many times before too There we go. The morning coffee scrum. This would be my kind of office. Okay, so we'll put, kind of center that, bring it up a little bit. And that's it. There you go. There's a percenters cartoon from start to finish. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm very, very grateful that you decided to come and watch it. And, uh, Please leave your comments or subscribe if you'd like to see more. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm really thankful that you decided to join me. Till the next one, see you then. Thank you.